two years ago i dropped a video kind of like this one and i just rewatched it and to be honest it's wild how much i've changed since then like you don't really notice it day to day by looking back i can see how much my hacking style my mindset and even this stuff that i care about now has evolved over time part of that is just learning new techniques part of it is just shifting my interest and just sometimes the bugs that i look for are different so all i'm trying to say is that everything from my approach has changed over the years and that comes with the tools of the trade that i use day to day and it's all completely new now i figured why not update this video it's time to show you some of the tools that i think every bug bounty hunter should know and give you a peek at the exact stuff i use day to day you really can't hack or you can but it just won't be as fun and easy without a proxy tool and if you're not familiar with a proxy tool what it does is it sits between your browser and the web server and it kind of just grabs all the traffic that you're sending to that web server and allows you to analyze it in a very very clean and easy way usually we use these because we want to be able to manipulate the requests that we're sending to these servers inject our payload fuzz look for vulnerabilities look for anomalies and things that could be interesting and just escalate them and hopefully be able to report something that could turn into a bounty so in this category you have a ton of options and some of those are paid for and some of them are free the ones that i usually tend to use is kaido because it is more affordable but also also, it is very community driven and you see a ton of hackers are just contributing to the ecosystem of kaido but you also have the runner up like burb suite which it is a little bit on the more expensive side but they've been around for maybe a, over a decade now they're doing cool research as well or you can go as far as using zap proxy if you don't want to pay for any of these and that was a project that was maintained by the ovas project but i think now it's been funded a little bit more and it's being built on more i don't use zap at all but i know a ton of hackers were happy about using it but you do have these options so if you're looking for one these are your options that you can use personally go to kaido and if you want to win a license actually i'm going to do you a favor go down into the comments type in the word kaido and i'll pick two users to give him a license to use kaido on me so that was an easy category it's just i don't want to cover that too much because i think there are a ton of videos on this that i've made in the past i've covered burp suite in the past i've done kaido in the past maybe i'll do a full course on kaido at some point on this channel but i don't want to waste too much time on this category of proxies but i do think that's a tool that every bug bounty hunter uses and if you're getting into bug bounties and you want to get started this should be your number one tool you should master it and become very good and comfortable with these tools so let's talk recon now recon is probably one of the most important parts of your day-to-day -day hacking and the thing that everybody gets confused when it comes down to recon is everyone thinks recon is automation it is pretty much removing yourself from finding vulnerabilities and having these massive scripts that look for bugs for you and you just copy paste them and record them a lot of people think of recon as running nuclei which we'll talk about in just a little bit but it's not that recon should be just finding extra assets to hack on and just kind of connecting them together and maybe being able to extend the attack surface while you are hacking on a specific company so that category specifically this one has not changed since the last video i still love to use subfinder because it allows you to use multiple sources and it just takes all those different sources and combines them all into one but it all comes down to how much money you're willing to spend or what api keys you have access to so if you're running subfinder without actually setting up keys even if those are free keys that you can use you are doing it right so do me a favor Make sure you go to a config file and find a config file under the dot folders. It's usually under dot config slash subfinder. And there is a YAML file in there that you can update and put all these different keys in. When I first started doing this, I just kind of had Shodan, Virus Soto, and uh, those, I think, only it. But I've recently bought a lot of more of those. If you want to buy something more affordable, C99 is a really good one that I use. You can go also as expensive as getting something like security trails, signing up for all these different services. But honestly, that comes down to how many of these do you have access to? How many of these do you want to go access and get a trial for? And how many different API keys you include within it? But also, you can take this whole entire process into a step further and just grabbing all those subdomains, resolving them, seeing what they resolve. If they resolve to another domain, for example, that domain could be a part of the infrastructure. You can enumerate on there you can go as far as doing permutations all that good stuff and if you want to learn more about that i have a free course on this very channel it's called the recon methodology for bug bounty hunters go look it up we talked all of that in that video you can just view it for free and there's also a free lab with it that's coming out in the next coming weeks so that was the second category is just finding more assets to hack on that is key for any bug bounty hunter that is hacking on these programs nowadays but remember this isn't always the case 
for a lot of bug bounty programs you may have some bug bounty programs that allow you to do any subdomain in any domain they own those are your google uber facebook you name it those companies allow you to do that but some companies are a lot smaller so they only allow you to hack on their main bug bounty program or their main asset in the bug bounty program and you have to just stick to the scope so make sure you're always in the scope before you start running tools like subfinder and going after all these different subdomains i also have a bunch of shodan keys so if you want to just comment shodan I will give you one of those but by the way don't go commenting both kaido and shodan you can only enter for one of them if you did kaido and you don't want to win kaido go delete it drop a comment saying shodan and i'll pick two or three of you to get a free access code to shodan as well so we've talked about your proxy tools so you can intercept data and you know fuzz with things manually or just use some of those plugins on kaido we also talked about looking for subdomains using tools like subfinder which is my go-to there are a couple of runner-ups in that category like a mass uh, subdomain finder uh, you can use some other open tools, but that's obviously the one that I go with. But then you have the next step of what do we do when we find these subdomains? Well, when you have subdomains that are given to you and you want to be able to hack on them and sometimes you don't have context, you do have a couple of options here. The first option here is to do something like a fuzzing where you take a dictionary word, like you go to look for a word list. Uh, you can go grab those from something like a sick list or maybe go on Asset Notes website and grab them. But you have to take those and see each of those entries in those word lists exist on those web servers. So this is when you start directory or file root forcing. And for this one, this category has not changed since the last video and it stays as FF, but I have been considering going to GoBuster over FF because of how much development is going into GoBuster. So if you want to see a whole video on GoBuster, obviously drop a comment, but I'm really thinking about just switching to GoBuster for 30 days and then making a video on reporting back on which ones I like more. The thing that I do like a lot about GoBuster is that they have these different modes that allows you to brute force for, let's say, virtual host. You can brute force for S3 buckets. You can brute force for different things rather than just one simple tool that does it all like FF does. FF is just, hey, you put the word fuzz anywhere you want in the http request and i will replace it with the keywords that you're giving me which is gobuster has these modes that says hey i want to specifically look for virtual host i want to specifically look at s3 buckets so that's kind of what i like about it and i'm thinking about switching over to so i want to make sure i combine those two and give you an option obviously if you're using something like kaido or burb suite or zap proxy all three of those have a tab where you can go into it, import your word list, and use something like Automate on Kaido. You can use Intruder on Burb Suite and just import your files and have it do the work for you. Sometimes I do that, but it's not the best way to do it. I like to have a tool on a command line, especially in the cloud, that I usually use for these purposes. That was the first approach. So we have FF, GoBuster, just fuzzing and using the old school dictionaries here, right here. And you can just do that with almost every website but the other option you have is using something like a historic data source right you can use these crawlers that have indexed all of the internet and look for data and kind of make sense of what these assets are and that's something that i do a lot of times because when i see a subdomain that has a like random name within the subdomain name i always ask the question of what was the purpose of this domain or subdomain? What was it supposed to do? Because I can't see the content. Sometimes it's a white page. Sometimes it's just an API that I don't know the API route for. You always want to have context. Context matters the most in bug bounty hunting, especially if you're going after a white target and you're just extending your attack surface by doing a lot of recon. So keep that in mind. You always want to make a little bit of assumptions based on the context of that website. And tools like Waymore make this way way more no pun intended they make it way more easier to do because they have all these different sources baked into them and all you have to do is just tell it hey i want to look for all the links that you can find on this specific subdomain but the cool thing with way more is that not only you can just get a list of all of those you can also download the content so you can actually look at the content of those pages and see if there's any api keys that may have been leaked in there or any javascript files that may have been in there i could give you more uh, resources or more endpoints and things like that so that's a really really good tool that i use i've been just using it a whole lot more shout out to xnl hacker for making this and just amazing tool all around so that's your second approach when it comes down to looking at assets and just trying to look for content that you want to hack on or just fuzz and just find vulnerabilities within you also have the option of just crawling these websites but crawling requires the websites to have some sort of a content so let's say you are going after a massive application like airbnb you can do all three of these you can do supplement brute forcing you can use way more to get all this historic data but also you can use a tool like katana to crawl them but i usually don't 
do that as much anymore just because of the fact that it just is it takes a lot of resources but also it's just it takes time so that's just a desperate measure that i use towards the end and sometimes you'll see me run katana but the exact order for me is always looking for my own word list then doing something like way more and then the hail mary at the end is just like hey let's just run katana on all this and just grab all the files and folders that we can come across and then we can just start compiling all of our lists together and just go and hack and look for vulnerabilities within all of them katana isn't a part of this video but i've done a massive video on all this go on the channel you'll find it it's about crawling using way more and katana and it's all around just a good introduction to this methodology and our last category is looking for a tool that allows you to look for blind xss because if you've been watching my channel for a while you know how much i love blind xss or just xss in general the thing with blind xss is though you used to be able to use a tool like xss hunter but that has changed now xss hunter is gone and honestly a lot of companies don't want you to use a third-party service to capture their data when it comes down to blind xss well i don't really use easy xss as much i do have it set up somewhere because of the course that i created if you want to learn how to use easy xss set it up and how i hunt for blind xss there will be a link down below for my course you can buy it for 30 dollars right now but regardless if you buy the course or not i do have it set up somewhere but i also have my own setup i've made something just super custom that does different things for it but honestly Honestly, in this category, Easy Exercise is hands down the best to use. Again, it's easy to install. It allows you to configure it a lot of different ways. And also, it gives you the payloads that you need and it allows you to have just a, a webhook that notifies your Discord or your Slack anytime that a new plan access fires so if you want to learn more about that actually i think that i've done a video on this it's called lessons learned from two hundred fifty thousand dollars of blind access that we also link down below you can go watch and learn more about so those are typically all of the tools that i use i do have one more tool that i've been just using more and more and that is nuclei and i don't use nuclei in the sense that everybody else does if you go and look at how everybody uses nuclei it's just everyone just downloads a the tool they download all the community templates and then just spray it everywhere and everywhere in the world and they just expect to find vulnerabilities while they're using the same thing as a thousand other hackers the way i use nuclei is very very different first of all i go through all the different templates that i like and i tag them so i tag them with nahamsek or maybe custom or a custom keyword that i know that i have customized and then i tag it even further with technologies and things like that so it's very very organized but the reason why i go through them and i tag them is because i also want to be able to customize these i go and add different paths to these i go and add different routing so for example if i'm looking for something like swagger and they have maybe five entries for swagger i go and add 20 30 more of those some of those i come up with and some of them i can just use ai and just come up with common patterns in places that these different endpoints would exist a lot of people don't do that and if you're trying to use nuclei you should definitely start with this very step the second thing i do is create a workflow so workflows are something that most people don't understand how to use in nuclei i'm not sure why but it's probably one of the best features of that tool so if you want to see a video on that i have one coming up but if you want to drop me a comment and say nuclei to convince me, why not drop another comment and we'll make that happen. I think that was all of them. These are the tools that I use very regularly, if not daily, but I do have a couple more that are just in my computer or on my machine that probably we can do a part two of this. So I'll just think about it and see if we can make that in the future. But for now, thank you for watching for this video all the way up to the end. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, become a homie, and also turn on the notification bell. So every time I post a video, you get alerted as well. All right, that's it. See you all in next week's video. Peace.